Hey golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. And we are back today with Pierce Lanou. Pierce, it's been a while since we've had you on. Um, we took a bit of a break from kind of recapping pro golf, just with new products to re- review and, and some testing. And um, but we're back now, and it's been an eventful uh, few weeks in pro golf. So we got to go over all of that first. But I mean, how are things? How are things going? Uh, do you like any of the new product? The new products kind of catching your eye at all? Um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be placing an order tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and, perfect. Uh, looking forward to, to getting out on the course again this spring, which around here, it might be like yeah. next week. I've actually already played twice this yeah. winter, once in January, once in February. So okay. I think that's the first time around here I've, I in my played. life I've played in either of those months. So yeah, I, it's a win for me already. I got to play February 1st yep. and February 4th, which in Minnesota does not happen. So um yeah but things are different here uh we got golf in minnesota in uh january and february and on tour at least on the pga tour we have long shots winning every yeah. single week so um let's kind of just briefly go over some of the the long shot winners on tour this year um i mean going back we had chris kirk at the century we had grayson murray at the sony open nick dunlap the amateur won the american express uh, Matthew Pavone, I believe I pronounced that right. The yeah, Frenchman. yeah, yeah, I've heard Pavone, Pavone. Pavone. I read it as Pavon at first. This yeah. is not correct. That's yeah. Um, I think we all did that. Right, and then the 54-hole uh, victory by Wyndham Clark at the Pebble Beach Pro Am. Nick Taylor, very exciting finish at the Phoenix Open, and then uh, another exciting finish at the Genesis Hideki Matsuyama. So. Is there, do you think there's anything to the, the long shot? Like there a reason for it or is it just, you know, it's just by happenstance, all these, you know, cause the, the big names have been hanging around the mm-hmm. leaderboard, but they just haven't come through really. Yeah. It's been weird. It's been very weird. Um, I'm still trying to get over the, the Pebble beach event. Mm-hmm. I was on Scotty that yeah. week and I was robbed of a final round. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, other than Hideki, it's been. But even he was considered a long shot. You know, he hasn't won in like two years. Mm-hmm. Um, but finally seeing one of those big names come through and, and, and get a victory was was nice to see. Um, but, yeah, it's been it's been just a really odd start to the yeah. season. I mean, it's been fun. Right. But it's it's just like week after week, like, okay, some, you know, somebody more noteworthy has got to win one of these things. And mm-hmm. every single week it's – not the case well and it hasn't really been i mean i'm trying to think back but there hasn't really been a sunday where someone's up by five and just has control of the tournament the whole sunday right which is i think the cool part is there's lead changes there's clutch shots that are happening every sunday and um obviously with some of these i mean the nick taylor one with because charlie hoffman took control of that tournament on sunday after scotty had control of it earlier in the day and then Nick Taylor makes a bunch of late birdies clutch to come back and win that one. Um, and, of course, Hideki at the Genesis. we got to talk about that one, too, because Hideki was – the long shot part of it for Hideki isn't – I mean, he's a really good player. Right. He's got a pretty big-time resume. He's won at Augusta. This is now nine PGA Tour events that he's won. Um, but to be – was it six back? Six behind and, at the start of the round on and Sunday. And then also, I mean, the way Luke List started, you, I mean, you kind of thought there was – you didn't think anything at all of Hideki Matsuyama being on the leaderboard. Mm-hmm. And then he storms back and puts together the round of a lifetime, really. I mean, yeah. it's it unreal. Yeah, it was uh, it was really fun to watch. Definitely the most fun I've had watching golf so far this year. Um, you know, anytime, anytime you get, get a round like that at a course like that for, you know, it's like you watch all week. And, you know, every once in a while, you know, a guy mixes in a low one here and there and and makes a big move. But to come from six behind on on Sunday at Riviera, play bogey free, nine birdies, his scorecard was just insane. Like he had three different runs of three birdies in a row to start the front and the back. And then I think it was 12 or it was 14, 15, 16. Or was it? No, it was 15, 16, 17. Because he hit the two iron shots to like combined 14 inches. Yep on 15 and 16 and then and at least one of them he like didn't hold a follow-through because yeah on 16 like the contact i think he i think he thought he was going to be in that bunker short he did barely just carry it he carried it by about a yard or two and yeah it was almost 
it was like a replay of the the shot on 15 mm-hmm. basically but yeah it was, that's the classic that's almost like the least favorite person to play with is yeah. the one that hits a shot and they think it stinks and they you know make a comment about it mm-hmm. and it ends up you know 10 feet away yeah and you gotta look at birdie look. yeah I, I know better now that when i'm watching hideki that more often than not when he does right. that it's probably gonna be pretty good. <laughs> he's probably just fine <laughs> yeah so so yeah when, when he looked pretty disappointed and then yeah he could have sneezed on that thing and and made birdie but mm-hmm. yeah um, it, he's he's fun to watch and it's good to see him see him kind of back in form and health and yeah when he when he's hitting it well he's he's been discussed as like one of the one of the better ball strikers mm-hmm. in the game in the modern modern day um we just haven't seen it in a while so seen it all kind of yeah and he's been together. dealing with some health stuff and yeah you know hasn't quite been 100 percent. but you're totally right like mm-hmm. especially t to green and and when he is on the, on the greens i mean that's when he goes and wins at augusta right or he can shoot 62 in the final round at the genesis to win by three after trailing by six to enter the day yeah uh, that is some serious ground being made up on the leaderboard uh, for sure. So the other thing we, I wanted to touch on um, too is Hideki's uh, clubs in his bag. Mm-hmm. Got a couple interesting things in there that I wanted to get your opinion on. Um, so I'll just go from the top down at the driver is a Shrixon ZX five Mark two LS. Um, now the second year that one's been sort of out and available um, sneaky, really, really good. It was really good in our testing. Um, two different brands then in the fairy woods this is where i was kind of not uh, surprised i guess is what i'll say the tailor-made qi10 and the cobra rad speed tour five wood um irons are strix on z forge too they're just kind of the straight muscle back blade cleveland rtx four wedges and then a scotty cameron prototype uh putter kind of that newport or newport two style um but i haven't have, i don't think i've ever i can't recall seeing a cobra rad speed club on tour other than Hideki's. I didn't know he had that until yeah. I was looking through the the what's in the bag on Sunday. I'm like, yeah, that's got to be recent. Yeah, and he is a v- like regarded as a very good Fairywood yeah. player. Yeah, I mean, like I think it was his last win was at the Sony a couple mm-hmm. years ago when he hit that that three wood in the playoff to like three feet mm-hmm. to beat I think it was Russell Henley. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've seen plenty of shots like that from him in his career with, with the fairway wood, but, um, yeah, Cobra, Ra- Cobra rad speed. How many years old is that now? I think that was a 2020. Okay. So that's three or four years. You know, it's about yeah. four years old now. Yeah. It's I just, you don't I, see, you don't see Cobra. Like you, you sometimes see like an older tailor made or Titleist wood out there, you know, cause fairway woods are clubs that guys will keep in the bag for mm-hmm. a long time i just haven't seen rad speed much at all no um, so was, i'm just I, I would love to if i could uh, you know talk to hideki like what's you know what what, what makes you yeah. stick with this one i don't know because i don't <laughs> think it was in the bag last year so i, I don't think that's so what either. i'm curious about is he must have like made that change or added in now so yeah I don't know. I, i'm pretty sure he had sim 2 titaniums yeah last that, year. that rings the bell he had both um so the QI10 makes sense to me. Yeah. But yeah, I saw the Cobra and I was just like, huh, interesting. Yeah. You don't really see those played often by guys that aren't Cobra staffers. And even the Cobra, st- like, I don't, I mean, again, there's, I, I'm not totally privy to every single club being played by every Cobra staffer, but right. I would be surprised if there was a, a Rad Speed Fairywood. Mm, for sure. In, in the bag of the Cobra yeah. staffer right now. So yeah. I don't know. I, I would, I'd be curious. Um, but, uh, you know, if golfers are going to trade in their old fairy woods and they don't need to be, even go uh, to something brand new to get something that Hideki Matsuyama no. used yeah. uh, to win at the Genesis. So um, anyway, just that was that caught my eye when I was looking at his clubs. So, yeah, the uh, wedges, too. The RTX yeah. fours yeah, are true. like they're up. six or seven years yeah, old. They're, they're even at, older. And I did say I did see that he's got kind of his own custom build to them a I'm little sure. bit. So I'm sure to some extent they are newer Mm -hmm. than the original rtx4 design um but yeah that's uh it's cool it's just cool to see some of that stuff because you know i'm sure with his contract it's probably something like he has you know 12 clubs or or 11 clubs to play shirks on cleveland stuff um so these that's where you kind of get to see these guys really toy with everything out there and see Mm -hmm. what's best for them rad speed just wasn't on my bingo card i guess no (laughs) no me either um Lastly, too, on the Genesis, uh, Scotty Scheffler putting. 
we talk about it. I feel like on every time we're yeah. every time we do this, do one of these it's been a theme. tour talk episodes. Yeah, we talk about Scotty's ball striking being all time great, and then we talk about the putter being almost last in the field, and that's exactly what it was again this week. It's it's yeah. uncanny how often it happens. Yeah, um, I don't know if you were watching the coverage on Sunday, but they had Rory in the booth for a little bit mm-hmm. after his round, and they they asked him about about the putting and, and Scotty and even Rory was like, I, I'd like to see him try, try a mallet style putter because Rory switched to that. He used to use the yeah. kind of the standard blade. I think he had like a Scotty Cameron Newport of some kind and um, kind of went through the same, same thing that Scotty's going through right now with the putter and, you know, said he switched to the mallet and the thing he likes about that is you don't have to put a perfect stroke on it every time. If you're a little bit off, the ball is yeah. still going to roll true on your line. Um, and then I was thinking, I was like, I'm pretty sure Scotty tried like one of the Phantoms he last tried, year. He but tried it was the, only uh, the, for spider, like a, the Spider Tour X models. Yeah, I don't he know, did. I don't know yeah. which one in particular, but I know he fiddled with one. They custom yeah. made one that was uh, that didn't have their insert. Okay. Because he want he likes the firmer sort of milled feel to it. So they, I remember that whole story popping up that they made one for him. Yep, but I do remember that. And then I think he tried a Phantom as well for like a week. Yeah. And then he tried one of like the Newport, like the Super Select Plus models, I think, the little thicker blade. Mm-hmm. Um, and now he's using like a Logan Olsen, yeah. which is a similar, very similar yeah. looking to the, the Scotty Cameron Newports. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't look. He must have just hated like the look or feel of, yeah. of the mallet. Um and, and and I'm not privy to the tech like the how it performed for him either. I mean, right. I, maybe he just there's some aspects of it he didn't like, but it seems again I'm, I, this is an amateur uh, uh, opinion on it, but it seems like Scotty's speed is fine. He's not smoking 20, 30 footers by the hole. It seems like he's just burning a lot of edges on short putts. Yeah, and maybe it's an alignment thing, or maybe it's a face angle thing. I don't know. Yeah, but something is happening on those three to six footers that it's costing him tournaments for I sure. Mean, he makes a normal percentage of those or he makes more kind of these seven to 10 footers that a lot of guys will make, you know, around half of those close to half of those if they're playing well and putting well, he's just no- nowhere close to that mark right now. Yeah. And I think it's, I think kind of it's magnified to a little bit because like he hits the ball so well, like we've talked about that, he's just putting a lot more than everyone yeah. else. Like he's not, you know, chipping it from just off the green and having a tap in par. He's on the green 20, 25 feet. And then, you know, every once in a while, it's just, he hits one close and yeah, I don't know. The five footers mm-hmm. seem to be the, the big struggle right now, but he definitely, he definitely hits more greens than probably anyone on tour. So he's putting a lot more to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's definitely it's definitely noticeable on the short ones. Yeah, so and he, he was kind of showing a little bit more emotion about it. Mm-hmm. It seemed like too at the Genesis. Yeah, you know, there was a clip, of course, of him throwing the golf ball. Mm-hmm. Um, there was couple a hot, times there was he, a hot mic clip. Too. There was a hot mic. There was a putter flip or yeah. toss. Um, so it's starting to get to him for sure. Yeah. I mean, that would that would drive any golfer nuts. Oh yeah, I mean, I I, mean especially when these, these stats are available. Yeah. Just say, hey, I am the best off the tee in the world. I am the best and overall T to green in the world by a comfortable margin, but I'm finishing, you know, 16th place because I'm putting worst in the field. Yeah. Yeah. I would like I'm sure to he's s- spending all this time. Oh, tweaking with the putter yeah. line angle changes, or maybe he's working with the putting coach and all these things. And it's nothing seems to be giving him that upper hand. No, yet. no, I would, I would like to see him try like what Rory said. I'd like to see him try a mallet for a while. Yeah. Um, seems like the times that he has changed, it's been for like a week or two and then he gives up on it. Mm-hmm. Whether it's like you said, maybe he just doesn't like the look of it, feel whatever. But, um, yeah, you got to think he's, he's to the, to the tipping point <laughs> just <Right>. about now. <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, cause it was a couple years ago when he sort of took over golf by, you know, like stormed through the golf, the golf season, right? Where he just won six times. It started right about now. It was the Phoenix Open. Yep. Um, and 
from there he went on an absolute tirade of, of victories. And, and I felt like he putted well in that, yeah, that stretch. It, it, that was sort of – it was always kind of his – I mean, he always hit the ball really well yeah. even before he was winning. The putter was pretty hot and cold, but it seems like now he can't even get hot with it. Like, Yeah. It's like he's out of the four rounds every week, he has like one – decent round yeah on the greens and the other three are like dead he'll shoot a 65 during yeah that round yeah you know and then he'll piece together 68 69 on the other rounds with losing a half stroke putting and yeah you know it's it's wild to see yeah. that and i hope i for the sake of the, like the greatness of uh, that he's striving for i hope he can find what he needs on the green yeah and i mean these guys usually figure it out one way yeah. or another but it has been a good year and like all of last year it was that was the story mm-hmm. for scotty and um it's, it's definitely carried over into the start of this season so yeah um well, yeah with with major season approaching you you gotta think he's gonna do something yeah well, whether it's drastic or not and we'll and see like will zalatoris another player who has struggled with the putter he's trying different things now he's got the broomstick mm-hmm. uh, which seems to be working maybe for him I will say that, you know, there's obviously some viral clips that have happened for Zalatoris with his putter and the short putts, yeah. and um, but seemed to roll it pretty well at Genesis. So I don't. Again, I'm not going to advocate and say that I know exactly. Hey, Scotty, you got to take the broomstick, and try that out. But I, I just can't even imagine. Yeah, seeing that for Scotty, he's a tall guy. But, they might yeah. have to make a, an extra long broomstick yeah. for him. Yeah, who knows? Maybe he needs a jailbird. <laughs> yeah, that, take it from Wyndham and Ricky. I mean. It, Maybe that's the answer. Um, okay, so last little segment here I wanted to touch on, um, and I, I mentioned this to you as well. Um, and maybe we've hinted at a couple of these too in our discussion already. But so, equipment trends on tour. Um, maybe this year, maybe even even prior to the new year, um, if you've noticed anything there. And I kind of want I want to get three from you. Top three equipment trends on tour that you've kind of noticed as you've been following the game here a little yeah. bit um whether it's a, a particular club that's doing really well uh type of club um you know a trend that's taking place you got anything for us in that department um well a couple of them are kind of on the on the same topic of discussion of putting yeah. so i think like last year was kind of when the the jailbird style mm-hmm. putter kind of became a really popular trend in golf and um I keep seeing more and more players on tour with that similar style. It might not be the specific jailbird yeah. Odyssey putter that, that we've seen from like Ricky and Wyndham. But, um, I know like I keep seeing even like downstairs we get putters in and like every brand is making something like that. Now it mm-hmm. seems like, um, like, like ping has one, you know, with the long grip, kind of like what Hovland uses. Um, they re-release the jailbird line um and yeah more and more guys on tour seem to be liking that style of putter yeah it's kind of like a Um, counterbalanced like you know it's probably a typical standard quote-unquote putter is about 35 inches and these are probably what 38 39 Mm -hmm. something like that Yeah, they're about 38 inches i think usually 39 um and then kind of just on like a separate separate piece of that is i think of all the winners this year on tour hideki i think was the first one to use a blade style mm-hmm. putter unless you count i think grayson murray has like the lab like oh the, he did he the had mez, the, uh, like the center shaft and yeah. mez is that, yeah. is that the yeah. mez one or the yeah, link it's, one it's, i think it's the it's link the one, link one. Yep. it's it's the lab um that yeah so lab. i don't know what you qualify that as but everybody else chris kirk uh, i know he uses, everybody a uses a mallet nick taylor uses a mallet um nick donlap uses a mallet mm-hmm. so it's it's been like predominant mallets for the winners so far this year so hideki i think was the first yeah. one with the true standard blade mm-hmm. putter to get a win this year which i thought was kind of it is fascinating kind of interesting and i've and i've kind of been on, in this camp since i started using a mallet where and it's maybe a, a new school train of thought if you will but i kind of think ma- mallets should be what everybody puts with just because they are more forgiving mm-hmm. um you're going to get better performance when you miss the center of the face. And I miss the center of the face a lot. I imagine golfers out there are missing the center of the face quite a bit, toe, heel, whatever it might be. Yeah. And so you're going to get better performance with a mallet than you will with a blade or, you know, Newport style or answer style. For sure. But I also 
totally respect the the you know aesthetic piece feel piece that golfers you know a lot of them are very particular about so but i think that speaks to nowadays the mallets seem to be winning tournaments yeah so yeah i don't know like to your point about scotty maybe maybe he'll take note of that and, yeah uh, i mean throw a mallet in the bag yeah i mean if he just takes a look at the winners on tour this year i mean he might might yeah maybe reconsider but yeah who knows um another another new launch this year that i think uh the tour players are really liking is the taylor made the qi 10s yeah um you know we just saw hideki has one of the fairway woods mm-hmm. in his bag he's not even a taylor made guy um and yeah i saw, saw him hit a lot of good three woods with that yeah. thing this week and uh, i know rory's rory's been using it he uh, he was like they were talking about some record i think it was on it was saturday or sunday on the weekend where he's hit like the most drives over 320 yards since yeah. like 2019 he was like coming up on some absurd number and he was hitting it like 350 yeah it seemed like on average it's that i haven't hit it's him effortless yet. for him it's crazy yeah it's he hits up on the ball at that high draw he's able to turn it over it's 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 crazy how quickly that ball just is 300 yards down the fairway yeah yeah so yeah. i think you know it'll be interesting to see kind of how I don't even know if we've had a tailor-made staffer win yet this year. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't Nick think so. Taylor, what does he play? He used to be a tailor-made guy. That's why I, um, I know he uses the spider. Part. He does, yes. Um, and he there's still some of that stuff left in the bag, I think. But he's titleist primarily okay. is, is what's in his bag now. Yeah. Um, but there's a couple guys on here I recognize that actually have – like QI 10, like you mentioned, Fairy Woods in yeah. the bag. Um, Kevin Kraft, um, in the last episode, actually mentioned the QI 10 tour head, the Fairy Wood, as his favorite Fairy Wood of the year. Okay. And so um, I think they've done a really good job with that and cleaning up the look of it. Yeah. Um, that crown now is so clean on the top. It's reminiscent of how clean Titleist's woods are. And they just kept a lot of the same tech, but strength in the faces. I mean, it's, it's really good. And yeah. so I think you're. I have noticed that too. A lot of, especially in the fairy woods, a lot of QI ten in play. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's probably one of them for sure. And then, probably honorable mention would be like the broomstick. Yeah. Colors. Um, I think two of the noteworthy ones that have vastly improved their putting just early in the season this year is Will Will Zalatoris we talked about, and mm-hmm. then uh, Ben On is another yeah. one of those guys that's using the the lab long broomstick style yep. putter. And I know there's other guys out there, Adam Scott, he's used that for a long time and there's a few others, but um, seems like the guys that have had really a difficult time on the greens in the past that have switched to that have yeah. been making big improvements. So that's mm-hmm. kind of been interesting to watch. Yeah, that, and Lucas Glover's another one. He yep. had a stretch last year where he won a couple events yeah he won back to back late late he in the was, season and he's notoriously had kind of some struggles on the greens mm-hmm. a little bit scotty like where he hits the ball tee to green you know among the elite players in the game and then the putter typically is kind of cold and brings him down and they've used that is it a mez one max i believe is the model name yep, yep. um it's you know it kind of looks a little goofy and if you are that player that's very particular aesthetically about what your putter looks like, you might have to make an adjustment there. But clearly they're, they're doing something right um, with the design of that because all these players, like you mentioned, Adam Scott, Ben On, Will Zalatoris, Lucas Glover, um, the list goes on, are seeing that improvement on the greens. And it's uh, I I'm, I'm imagine a lot of it too, just based on the way that those designs look as – there's both some subtle and not so subtle alignment lines packed into that design. So there's some pretty clear ones right off. You look at the club head from, you know, the address perspective. It's a couple thick lines there, but also the way the the shape of the putter is designed too. There's some lines sort of um, etched in there subtly that also help you with alignment. So mm-hmm. there's a lot to like about that. And if you are somebody that is struggling on the greens and you're you have an open mind about trying something new you know those are 
things you can try in a fitting at second swing is, is those longer broomstick or even just like a long part we talked about earlier, the 38, 39 inches, like the jailbird designs um, that can help you with yeah, that because absolutely clearly it's becoming a trend a lot yeah. like these seven woods and nine woods we're seeing too we're seeing a lot more of those and now they're, they're, it's kind of the same premise for both they're just they're helping players a little bit more than maybe the yeah. the other types of uh, types of clubs out there yeah yeah i mean if if it were me and i was <laughs> if i was a professional golfer i would just want what's going to get the ball in the hole in the least amount of strokes right. <laughs> so I, w- I wouldn't probably be too picky but um yeah, I mean, for a guy like Willie Z, we, we've seen those clips of him. He seems like he just always struggles getting the putter head straight back, straight mm-hmm. through. Um, with the broomstick now, he seems like he's kind of got got the stroke figured out a little bit. Um, you know, you, you think of it like a pendulum, right? Mm-hmm. Straight back, straight through. So I think, yeah, like the, the alignment aids on that thing and just the sheer length of it and the, the putting stance you have to make with that, I think helps a lot in terms of yep. just your your swing plane so yeah and i can't imagine you know it's a very different like feel so i imagine it's something that takes a little bit of yeah time and a lot of hours to sort of get comfortable with especially it. not being able to anchor it like you used yeah to. right right yeah um and that part has to be a little weird to get used mm-hmm. to but if you if it works better that works better you know so yep. i think a lot of these guys are, are seeing the results of that so um we got the we've got the long putters. We've got the tailor-made QI fairy woods, QI ten fairy woods. We've got the broomstick putters that are kind of taking golf by storm here early in 2024. Um, lastly, did want to ask you a little bit about about Tiger Woods. Um, before it was very disappointing to see him withdraw from the Genesis, hoping obviously he can recover and be part of the major tournaments this year and maybe any other events he might have had on the schedule. Um, sounds like it was a uh, influenza he was dealing with so um yeah it was a scary scene there for a little bit when you right. saw the the ambulance pull up and you're wondering what was going on mm-hmm. but um at least the relief that it was only influenza but yeah um also unveiled the new brand so i wanted yeah. to get maybe a take from pierce on on sunday red um it, it kind of grew on me seeing yeah i've seen him out there wearing it you know when it first dropped i was kind of like eh, i don't know if i love the <laughs> the logo yeah. Um, I saw a lot of comparisons to the old Slazinger logo. Yeah, I did see those too. <laughs> yeah, um, and I think I don't I don't think they're a bad comparison either. I think I think it looks better. Like I think on the front of his shirt and hat, like he's got just that kind of tiger logo with no letters. Yeah. And then on the back, it's got the SDR. I think it just looks yeah. cleaner without the letters. I think so too. I think part of me being weird is that I also don't like that he made Sunday two words. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that's just, uh, that's how I am. For sure. That's, I really don't have a huge issue with the rest of it, honestly. Mm-hmm. It's just that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's sad to see the departure of Tiger and Nike. For sure. Um, and then the TW logo, too, which he mentioned was kind of like, he's like, oh, I'm done with it. And yeah. I was like, you know, when I was 11, 12 years old, like, there was nothing more iconic. There was no logo I wanted more on my hat than that TW logo. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's been sad to see that kind of split mm-hmm. up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's just another um, another page in, in Tiger's long book of career, yeah, clothing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the whole deal. So, I mean, I, I really like the look of those crew necks and the hoodies. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to be like 200 bucks, so <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't be wearing one myself. But yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of if any other players on tour ever ever throw that on. That's true. Like Scotty had or if he'll even maybe he won't even do that. You know? Yeah, I, maybe I, not. I saw Scotty's shoes though. Don't they took have the, the TW uh, off. The TW logo on the bottom yeah. anymore. Um, I can't. I'm surprised. Give I guess given his footwork, maybe they're like, well, we better mm-hmm. cover that up because his yeah. the bottom of his feet sometimes are right in view of the camera yeah right. and then the shoes are, are those so those are his brand now i the think sun, that's what i was hearing was their yeah. sunday red because he had been shoes. playing with foot joys the last I couple they looked, years i thought they looked a lot like foot joys yeah they i thought they looked like the premieres a lot too but and maybe yeah maybe, maybe they are and they just maybe there's the a lot of input yeah. from foot joy on those or something yeah I, i'm not gonna i'm just speculating yeah but i have no idea i don't know it's uh it's interesting times are a changing in golf here. yeah um 
it's been an interesting start to the year. Lots of long shot winners, as we discussed. Um, but as Hideki showed us too, though, if, if the, a superstar player gets hot with the putter, they can make history happen as well. Um, and uh, it's been, and we just talked about it. Some things are changing. The long putters are coming back almost after the belly putters were banned. And now we've got some new designs and, and new ideas coming in and golfers are taking advantage of them. So um, I guess that, takes me to the kind of the, the wrap here and that's like golfers can get fit at second swing for whatever works for them um might be a long putter might be a broomstick putter um could be a tailor-made qi 10 fairy wood that we mentioned as well um trade in your old stuff upgrade get fit and play better golf so yep pierce thanks for joining um we'll uh we'll chat again here maybe towards uh augusta time yeah uh, but in the meantime uh, let's get on the course here, right? It's going to warm up. We're going to get out in Minnesota 50s, here and play some golf, week. right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, Pierce, thanks. And uh, golfers, again, Sunday Swing. Check it out every week on the Second Swing blog. Thanks, Drew.